there was a group of eight women who met in different occasions and we are all faculty members in different uh, higher education institutions. We are all struggling with the task how to teach Holocaust and we thought it would be great to have a workshop and we can reflect on our experiences and since there are so many challenges today for Holocaust education. We were thinking of exchanging experiences, best practices and to reflect on the inability sometimes of the professors to reach out for the students beyond the facts. And uh, that's why we thought that it would be nice to have a conference at the Central European University when we are looking at the frames in which Holocaust education is constructed, looking at the different agents who are agents of memorialization nowadays, and also, first of all, look at the hands-on practices and uh, the different practices and teaching experiences to think of Holocaust education in a critical way. Before you can really deal with the factuality of a situation. You have to be prepared to move past the, the preconceived notions or the mythologies that you've inherited perhaps from the past or that you've developed for yourself in order to avoid really dealing with the difficult, in the case of the Holocaust, the difficult issues related to history of the Holocaust and one's own personal behavior and the behavior of one's country. I think the Holocaust should be a point of reference for history education because it's so disturbing. Um, because I think it displays the mechanisms of stereotypization, discrimination, persecution of minorities. And beside of learning about the historical facts, I think it shows an opportunity to learn about these mechanisms and relate to them. I think that it's important to recognize the danger of Holocaust denial, but I don't think it's a clear and present danger right this moment that we are threatened of being overwhelmed by deniers. Uh, I think it's a clear and future danger, though the future may be much closer than some of us originally thought. I think places such as the former Soviet bloc countries, um, it may be even closer than that. And I'm not talking about what I call hardcore Holocaust denial, where someone would say, oh, they weren't really killed or they weren't really gas chambers. What I'm talking about is soft core denial, and I think you do see that in Eastern Europe. It's not denying the event itself, but it's reinterpreting the event. So it comes out as something quite different from what it really is. Every year it's an eye-opener for my students that our studying of the Holocaust teaches us the role models are all monsters, evil persons, and don't tell us how to stand up, how to be courageous, how to be civilly disobedient citizens of the world. Especially in Central Eastern Europe, this is very important. In the post-communist era, to teach young people to be much different from their parents and grandparents, or to find out that their grandparents and parents fought that they protested, to let these narratives come out. Um, this is what will, because one of the things that keeps coming up um, in our deliberations is how to make the link, especially in the future when there, this won't be living history. One of the links would be to show how people who are morally courageous are there every time you need them. There are a few. Without saying stereotyping and propaganda can lead to these kinds of acts, looking at the Holocaust and understanding and learning that for students and teachers in Rwanda makes them start thinking about potentially their own history because they have heard bits and pieces maybe at home or the ideology that led to the Rwandan genocide may still be present in their home. But it makes them think in a way or start having a conversation without it being directly emotionally connected to their own. Sometimes talking about somebody else's problem, in a way, and seeing what those problems are may help look 
at your own at some point and may get you to be open to look at your own. The main purpose is to look at how memory work can help us to make a better word and uh, uh, simply to measure if our educational uh, activity at all makes difference because this is one thing that somebody gets an A from a Holocaust and gender class but the question is what that particular student learned from this and how this uh, uh, knowledge, these skills, these emotions, this emotional intelligence uh, can be later on used and transferred to a crisis situation. So how can we actually uh, make sure that uh, uh, those who are studying Holocaust uh, and other genocides would actually learn how to stand up at the moment when the moment comes.